Kronid Arkadyevich Lubarsky, Russian, semicolon April 4, 1934, Skov, Soviet Union, May 23, 1996, Bali, Indonesia, was a Russian journalist, dissident, human rights activist and political prisoner. Early career, born in the city of Skov, USSR, on April 4, 1934. Lombarsky graduated from the Moscow State University in 1956 and worked as an astrophysicist at the All Union Institute of Scientific and Technical Information of the USSR Academy of Sciences. His academic work included studies on meteors and space biology. He was also working in the Soviet program of interplanetary exploration of Mars. He authored several books on astrobiology and translated scientific works into Russian, including books by Fred Hoyle. Dissident Activity In the mid-1960s, Lombarsky became active in the civil rights movement and became a contributing editor of various Sam Eisdat publications. These included the Chronicle of Current Events which circulated between April 1968 and July 1982 documenting extrajudicial persecution, arrests, court proceedings, incarceration in psychiatric hospitals and other forms of harassment in the Soviet Union. In January 1972, La Ivarsky's apartment was searched by the police and more than 600 documents, manuscripts and books were confiscated. The search was followed by his arrest three days later on charges of anti-Soviet agitation and propaganda. Following his conviction on October 30, 1972, Lubarsky spent the next five years in various labor camps and prisons in Mordovia, as well as the notorious Vladimir Central Prison. While still in the camps, he initiated the idea of celebrating a day of the political prisoner in the USSR. The initiative spread quickly to other camps and prisons. The annual event later became Russia's Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Political Repressions. After his release, Lombarsky was exiled to Tarusa, a town in the Moscow region, where he was kept under surveillance. During this period, he became one of the managers of the public aid fund set up by the writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn to aid political prisoners, and a member of the Soviet branch of Amnesty International. However, mounting pressures by the authorities and the imminent threat of a renewed arrest forced Lombarsky and his family into immigration in October 1977. Stripped of his citizenship, he sought political asylum in West Germany. Immigration in Munich, Lombarsky founded a bulletin, Vesti is SSSR, USSR News Brief, a periodical providing comprehensive information between 1978 and 1988 about the human rights situation and resistance to the communist regime in the Soviet Union. Published in Russian and English twice a month, this bulletin included an annual list of political prisoners in the USSR a yearbook of political prisoners complete with case details and family contacts. The list appeared until 1989, when the last Soviet political prisoner was released, and was widely used for reference by private citizens, human rights organizations and numerous parliamentary commissions, as well as the United States Congress. Beginning in 1984, Lombarsky also edited and published the magazine Strana Amir, The Country and the World. Taking its name from a well-known book by the political dissident and Nobel laureate, Andrei Sakharov, the magazine was intended for a broad readership. It reported not only on repression and resistance in the USSR but also economic and political developments in the rest of the world. Post-Soviet Russia Lombarsky returned to Russia following the breakup of the USSR. His citizenship was restored in June 1992.
Lubarsky was one of the authors of the current Constitution of the Russian Federation and drafted a number of its articles, including those on the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of Russia. In 1990, he joined the Soviet International Commission chaired by Erwin Kodler investigating the fate of Raoul Wallenberg, the Swedish diplomat who disappeared into the Soviet prison system. In February 1993, he joined the magazine The New Times, where he was appointed first deputy editor-in-chief. He continued to write articles in defense of democracy and human rights. He was strongly opposed to the First Chechen War and took Duma deputy and filmmaker Stanislav Govoruk into court for defamation, when the latter quoted from a letter supposedly showing that certain Russian journalists were in the pay of the Chechen authorities. After his death, Lubarsky's widow Galina won the case against Govoruk and received the nominal damages, one Russian ruble, that he had demanded. From 1993 to 1996, Lubarsky led the revived Moscow Helsinki Group, a watchdog organization first set up in the mid-1970s to monitor Soviet compliance with the human rights provisions in the 1975 Helsinki Final Act. Lubarsky died of a heart attack on May 23, 1996, while vacationing in Indonesia. In 2000 he was named posthumously as one of 50 World Press Freedom Heroes of the past 50 years by the International Press Institute. Mm -hmm.